I <laughs> bad joke. <laughs> bad joke. Sorry. Um, um, let's do let's do a very quick round of. Oh, um, if you if the um, share screen that I already have up there is in your way, just note that you can move it off in a different direction. Let's do oh, cool. let's do some very quick introductions. And Karen, you were already talking, so go ahead. Introduce yourself first. Wait, are Nick Callis and um, Layla here? Yeah, Nick Callis and Layla um, are in the, the room. I'm not sure where their avatars just went. <laughs> They're hiding. No, let's see. There's seven people in the room, and we're. Oh, here. I think Layla just came back. She might have been having a tech issue. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, Layla, can you hear Layla, us okay? You I'm so sorry. My iPad keeps on freezing for some reason, uh -huh. but um, I was having tech issues. Okay. Let's hope that doesn't continue, but we'll see. Um, and, it happens. And is Nicholas here? She's also experiencing tech issues as yeah, well. Yeah. I, I, I should have checked this. Is, um, It may be worth doing. I'm not sure. But if the iPad is continuing to work, that's good. But you technically it would be better if you were on a computer but but stay where you are don't don't move at this point but i hope nicholas can get in um yeah. are you back channeling with her somehow yeah wait am i lagging as well not so much you're fine all right okay but yeah, she's texting me right now that she's going to join on different devices, but um, she's going to be here soon. Okay. So it's not regarding the um, uh, the iPad. It's not uh, you. It's actually the Kumo space is um, developing its, it, this platform is developing its capability. So it's not quite um, uh, so... So much working it, with a we know iPad, it, yeah. we know it works best on a computer with Chrome, but I should have and I, I forgot to mention so that. So it's to not you. you. Yeah. So Karen, keep going. Just uh, where you teach and what you do, quickly, and everyone go around and do that, please. I'm Kieran Chaudhary, and I teach at Harvest Collegiate High School in um, New York, in Manhattan. Harvest is a um, New York City public high school. Um, Want to keep it and short. And we're small. Okay. And I teach um, uh, English and humanities. And um, I love using youth voices. And and we love that your partner is, is practicing in the background again. That's wonderful. <laughs> she doesn't. Right. Jane, go for it. Hi, everyone. I'm Jane Higgins. I'm the director of the New York City Writing Project. Um, I was also just saying to Melissa, I also adjunct at Lehman College in the School of Education. And I taught high school English and was a college advisor for 10 years in a New York City public school. Sam, you got to unmute. And we're interrupting Sam's dinner. I apologize, Sam. But you got to unmute, Sam. We can't hear you if you're talking. Uh, he's still talking and he's still muted. Okay. I think he might be just chewing. Okay. Sam, um, we'll talk to you when you're ready. Okay. Rich, nice to see you. Hi, Rich Novak, English teacher in uh, Connecticut. And um, no relation to Max Hedrum, despite how my head looks here. But this is awesome. <laughs> cool. Sam, you're you're back now. Sorry. Yeah, I literally lost my tab. <laughs> too many tabs, and I was like, "Where's my tab?" Anyway, hey y'all, Reed, Sam, aka uh, I teach here in Philadelphia at the U School, and my tag is I teach young people to read, write, and make sense of the world, and I side hustle for social good the rest of the time. Cool. Layla, how's Nicholas doing? Uh, having those diff yeah is she good um, you know she's still trying to you know navigate her way in 
Okay. Um, definitely update you when you know. Paul, okay. would it be possible for me to set up a Zoom or side channel and then just share my screen with some you seen it, Carlos, that way? Uh, no. Okay. It's it's very complicated. <laughs> or Layla, what we if have, you put your Carlos on that. speakerphone? She was in before. I'm not sure what the problem is. She was fine before. I Melissa, do you want to introduce? I mean, I mean, Ian, of yeah. course you could try that. I just don't think it'll work because of echo and other things. But yeah, we need to get her in here. Melissa, go ahead. Introduce, please. Hi, all. I'm Melissa. I'm at Lehman College, uh, childhood and early childhood. Um, I worked with the National Writing Project in Puerto Rico, and I was in Puerto Rico for about 20 years. Um, so it's two years that I'm back in the city. Happy to be here. Okay. Layla, do you want to say, introduce yourself very briefly? You're going to do more in a second. Or are you working with Nicholas? <laughs> Of course. I just need to ask again, just to make sure. Sure, can go ahead. Can you guys hear me? We can, can hear you. Hear yes. Me? Yes. In terms of seeing me, is it? We can see you and hear you. You're perfect. Okay. All right. Well, hi, everyone. It is such an honor to be here with you all today. Um, my name is Layla. I'm a high school junior at Fordham High School for the Arts in the Bronx, where Mr. Shuffler teaches. And he was my former AP Lang teacher. He's practically the reason why I'm here to present, why I'm here to present a project that I once wanted to start at a newspaper club, which I'll talk more about. But um, yeah, that's just a bit about me. Let's, um, that's cool. Um, any updates on Nicholas or what we might be able to do? Please um, on a Google Meet so I could try sharing my screen. Okay. But then how would we be we, then we won't be able to share the slides, but I guess you could share the slides then. Yeah, I could try both. Um, all right. So, hey, can you all see Nikali's? Nikali's, let me try sharing my screen from here. Um, this is very meta. You're, you're good. We can okay, see. So, Nicholas, can you can you speak so we can hear if we can hear you? Hello, hello. Can you hear us? She so, can... Nicholas, can you say something? Yeah, I can speak. Okay. Can you hear her? Yes, we can. Okay, I guess this is functional, right? <laughs> Nominally. Yeah, I don't. Yep. Yeah. At least just for introductions. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going to happen okay, when, so, when, when you share the slides, though, but we'll see. All right, we'll get there. So, Nikalis, do you want to just introduce yourself briefly? We were just going on to sort of share quick introductions. Yeah, so my name is Nikalis. I'm a junior at Fordham High School for the Arts, and I'm going to be the sound is going in and out. Yeah, it's not it's not working here, guys. Um, Nikali, can you um, can you try again? I mean, you were in fine when we tested, and earlier. What's? I'm not sure what the issue is. It was a problem with my wife, but I can try again. Yeah, let's try again. Let's not do this. This is all right. It's not I'll working. end. I'll end the meet. Sure. Okay. So, Nikali, try so, one more time, and if it's trouble, just email me. Yeah. Thanks for your patience, everybody, and thanks for trying, Ian. I don't know. It's sure. Just, it's just it was going in and out. I mean, we did we did spend a half an hour testing this. It was working. I don't know what's going on. Anyway. Do you want me to go ahead and introduce myself real quick? I'm sorry, Ian. Yes, please do that. Most yes. people know know me. Um, no, but I guess for those uh, for those I haven't met, don't know as well. I just met Melissa. Rich, it's a pleasure to meet you. Karen, it's a pleasure to meet you. Sam, very nice to meet you a few minutes ago. Um, I'm a former New York City teaching fellow. I teach English and computer science at Fordham High School for the Arts, which is a small public art school in the Bronx on the Roosevelt campus. And uh, Jane is one of my former uh, professors. Okay, let's hope she's here. 
Let's hope that continues to work. <laughs> hey there, can you hear hey, us? Hey, can you hear us? I think she can. She just has to unmute and come on up and join us. So, Nikalis, if you're, there should be a button for you to unmute and turn your camera and microphone on. If you move up to the middle of the room, that's where we all are. Just to say, she was the first person here. <laughs> it was working perfectly. Okay. All right. Le you are Layla, how did you unmute? Because I think Nikki might be having trouble with that. Well, there is like an option on the bottom. Yeah. To do so. And then, Callie, do you see options on the bottom for turning your camera and video on or your voice? Did she did she leave again? Um, uh, so no, I, I, should we, I mean, I think Nikki's going to try to come back as best as she can, but should we have Layla start the intro of the topic? Let's do that. Cool. Away, Layla. Well, let's give Nicholas one more shot at it since she's here. There you are. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Hopefully it'll stick. Do you want to introduce yourself very briefly, Nicholas, and then Nicholas, sorry. And then and then you and Layla can take off with the slides. Yeah, sorry about the background noise, but um it's fine. my name is Nicholas and I'm a junior at Fordham High School for the Arts. And um, the reason that I set out to um, be Can't to found this um, literary magazine with Layla is because I had already like a move down, move down, Karen. Art. So I just thought that it would be like a great idea to like um, create like a passion project that revolves around the things that I'm interested in. Since I do a little bit of playwriting and poetry <laughs> and poetry slam, so I thought that it would be like really. Um, important to be able to like create a platform where other students like me can also express themselves creatively the same way that I have for many years. Um, I'm gonna, sh I'm sharing the um, slides now. Do you guys want to tell me to go ahead or back? I guess you can move forward now since you already okay. um, did a brief introduction, but yeah. <clears throat> Layla, do you want to go next? Or is this what we're up to? Um, is Nikali still? Nikali, do you want to say more? Present yourself um, in terms of like your credibility? <laughs> you know? All right. So maybe we need to uh, just ditch this and uh, get go on a Zoom. I'm not sure. I mean, I can just drop a Google Meet link in the chat if you like. And we can all go there. That um, works for me. I can put it in the chat. Well, let me see though. But she's there. Nicholas, I, I don't know, quite understand. Nicholas, can you? Yeah, there you go. Are you? Can you? Yeah. Okay, good. I think All I right, think we're okay. So, yeah, she'll, she'll get used to it. Go ahead. Hi. Okay. So, so you're, here in the slide, that's you know a picture of me, and um, some things about me are that, as I've already stated, I'm a junior at Fordham High School for the Arts. We're I'm rising senior, right? <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, well, yeah, I'm a rising senior. Um, I have an interest for marketing, and I'm also a little bit of an artist since I have experience with visual art. 
Um, I'm an Urban Word Teen Poetry Slam finalist, hmm. and I'm a Lucille Lord Tell Theater Playwriting Fellowship recipient because I won a playwriting contest for NYC students this year. Move on. Layla, are you here? All right. I'm hoping you guys hear and see me well because on my end, it's quite, you know. No, we're but good. hi, everyone. It's, it's great to, you know, introduce myself again. I'm also a rising senior at the same school of McCauley's for my school for the arts. Um, so in my free time, I love to do journalism, and I'm currently working on trying to pitch my some of my articles into Teen Vogue with a mentor I have, and I'm also an educator for some separate organizations, an activist and an entrepreneur. Um, additionally, I am the New York City winner of the Princeton Prize in Race Relations. Um, it's basically an award recognition by Princeton University that honors students who are doing work to advance racial equity in their communities. And um, lastly, I'm a Yale Young Global Scholar um, so I'm just going to be taking a seminar with Yale University to do literature and philosophy. Um, can you guys hear me? Because yes, I it's perfect. Know. You're doing great. Yeah. 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 Keep going. All right. All right. We're on our story now. All right. Can you all hear me well? Yes, yes, yes. Perfectly. Okay, so this is our story. So in an effort for me and Layla to establish a newspaper club in our high school due to the rise of racial injustices spiking across the globe, our newspaper club proposal was rejected by our school administration. Hmm. We then branched out to create a media-based publication for Bronx teenagers with the support of our English teacher, Mr. Scheffler, and our history teacher. And now Journals of Color is a growing community of 40 plus Bronx creatives working to increase by POC and LGBTQ representation in literature. Throughout our monthly magazine issues and up. Whoops, we lost her. Hopefully she'll come back. <laughs> so, Layla, why don't you just end? I just want to check, Paul, do you want to stick with the platform? Do you want me to share a Google Meet link? I don't know. Um, we can move out, I guess. Uh, we could all go there. Um, I Because I it was where, Layla, you're back, though. Can you just unmute and speak again or not? I just don't know which is easier. Yeah. Go ahead, Layla. I think, a, I think no. a Google Meet would be preferable because... But we can hear you. Go ahead. But I. You can hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. I don't. I don't know which okay. is easier to do. If you think it's easier to go out, we can. Um. But you know, regathering is always an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could. We could just continue with the and see what happens. And if okay. it's like really, really bad. The next time we'll 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 go back out. Okay, I'm not, I'm not being sad <laughs> yeah, about the. Yeah, I'm happy to move if we need to. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm still here, so I guess I'll still present. Okay. Um, so just to pick off, just to pick off where Nick Hollis left off, um, we are a growing community of 40 plus Bronx teenagers working to increase BIPOC and LGBTQIA plus representation and literature. And we release monthly magazine issues to do to do just that. And we're also working on producing upcoming initiatives and projects to offer more than just a magazine um, and to appeal for more audiences besides Bronx youth. So we definitely want to include educators in this mission and adults and just, you know, have a more um, wide range of an audience. And throughout it all, we are censoring anti-racism and empathy throughout all of our work. So yeah, you can move on to the next slide. Okay. 
if you are interested in accessing our issues and, you know, actually viewing the work that we produce instead of, you know, just being all talk, but, you know, actually seeing our action, you can see our past magazine issues at linktree slash journals of color as well as journalsofcolor.org is also posted there too. So we definitely encourage you guys, you know, on your separate tab to just go to this link tree because this is the main platform where we um, like advertise, not just our magazine, but upcoming things that you'll see in the slides later. Um, so I guess you can move on to the next slide now. Try, try to play it. Go ahead. Yes, that, that would be really great. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk while so it's playing? Yeah. Just, yeah, definitely. That that was what I was intending because it is Sorry. a minute. So I'll just try to speak for a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a glimpse into our issue seven magazine titled Pride Month. Um, so you know, it began with our director's letters from me and the Cowleys, um, because this is our last issue for the spring until we start releasing again in the fall. Um, so we usually start off our magazines with like publicizing things that we want to advertise that are, you know, being released within the next couple of months. Um, and we feature our, you know, like the team members. And before we do all that, you know, we just got to feature everything. And then we go on into the poems and the, like the prose pieces, the art and photography. So if you can see here, the general vibe that we go for is using powerful photography as the background art to supply with the poetry that's being portrayed. So you can really have a full, you know, one of a kind experience, um, you know, to just view all the storytelling and truly feel like inspired and empowered and just have a wave of just visions and aesthetics thrown at you. That's definitely the goal of our magazine issues. Um, and here's like the art and photography. So we definitely, you know, it's a wide range of variety of art pieces as you see. Um, and since this is the last issue for the spring until we start releasing again in the fall of 2021, um, we wanted to include like a special segment to for you guys to view like what the Journals of Color team members had to say about their experience. So I definitely recommend looking at the last couple of pages of issue seven, just to hear directly from our team members to see how much, you know, they have grown after being in Journals of Color. Um, so yeah, I guess you can move on to the next slide now. Mm -hmm. We're there. All right. So um, in terms of, you know, our future goals that we wanted to share with you guys, first and foremost is definitely educator involvement because you know, moving forward, we do believe that in terms of achieving some of our missions, like increasing representation in literature, we definitely want to keep educators at the backbone um, of achieving that mission. So, you know, since you guys are teachers, you know, we would <laughs> love for you um, to share your thoughts in terms of what you would like to see and what we like to receive support with Genesis of Color moving forward, because we want to include an educator tab on our website um, that serves as a way for you to include our poems and art and photography within your lesson plans and your curriculum. And Mr. Scheffler, he has done this already. So if you want, you can speak to that experience as well. But um, within Linktree slash Journals of Color, there is a form for you to fill out if you're interested, um, just to provide more insights on how you would like to be involved in Journals of Color and how we can better support you. But Mr. Scheffler, would you like to speak on your experience? Sure, of, you know, sure. Our I'll jump in. Thank you, Layla. And I've been dropping the links you've mentioned in the chat. So if anybody wants to click those right now, you can just click them in the chat. Um, I'm sh I hope you've all had the pleasure of experiencing this before, of sort of having the power of students speak to other students about their own writing they've had published. But it's been really incredible to get to invite students who have been published by Journals of Color to come speak to other students about their work. Like I've used poems in different units, um, you know, had students respond to pieces from the magazines. And then and Layla and Nikalis and the rest of the staff members have been very accommodating to just like you know, I'll invite them, I'll invite someone who wrote a piece to come speak to our students and say, hey, you know, 
talk about, you know, can you talk about your creative process? Students will have questions for them. And because the magazines have such a range of topics from identity to immigration to pride, there's a lot of opportunities for, you know, curriculum development in that sense. And I've had multiple students say to me after one of these visits, holy cow, like Elliot, one of the poets who regularly contributes to the magazine, he's only a year older than me and he's publishing work that's out there, right? And so then it inspires them to think about what they could go do. So um, if you edit, feel that there's any opportunity in your classrooms to like, you know, leverage that kind of work, I, it's really had a lot, paid a really big dividends for me and my students. I also just want to emphasize this magazine's totally independent. So even though I'm the, I taught Nikalis and Layla, I'm not involved in the magazine. It's entirely student run independent from our school so it it's not tied to our high school it exists outside of any school cool should we go to the next slide i'm not cutting you off am i in or no oh, please go ahead okay do you want to speak to the slide about your future goals So just to detail more about our future goals, definitely to, you know, have an actual nonprofit status. So 501c3 status after we file those tax papers and stuff, um, just to have even more credibility for journals of color. Um, additionally, you know, we would love to expand our team even more, um, having even more Bronx teenagers. Um, you know, within our team, as well as maybe having a council of educators. Maybe you guys will possibly be on that council and can regularly meet and, you know, discuss ways to, you know, have education involved in our activism and our mission. Um, additionally, um, since we do offer monthly magazines that's geared towards creative writing, um, as someone who is a journalist, I would definitely love to have a research-based articles posted on our website, like in a blog sort of style. Um, and we are also launching a summer art contest and a fall photography contest. And additionally, one of our another one of our goals is to launch a mentorship program titled Bronx Leaders Network, um, just to just to provide more like networking and you know college and career readiness skills for Bronx teenagers and directly be paired with a mentor in their desired career path and hone their skills even more. Um, last but not least, you know, we would definitely love to offer fall college and career readiness workshops. So that's just a bit of our future goals. Mm -hmm. Um, you can move on to the next slide now. Oh. So additionally, I also wanted to advertise our discord. Um, so we recently launched a Discord for our readers to directly interact with our team members. So if you are interested in actually interacting with our community, actually, you know, getting the Journals of Color experience, even just as a reader, and asking us questions and just even anything, we implore you to, you know, join our Discord. And we definitely want it to be a safe and public space um, for all our readers to just, you know, come and have fun and also just talk about a wide range of social issues and, you know, things that are happening in the world. So definitely like a second family. Um, so you can also access that in our link tree. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Shuffler is posting this in the chat, but if he is, you can, you know, you know join our Discord. That would be definitely great. Um, so yeah, you can move on to the next slide now. Okay, yeah, and let me know, so, go ahead, I'll, yeah, I'll let me know ahead. when you want me to take over, but go ahead for a minute. All right, so now I would definitely love to transition into sort of a time for you to really reflect on our latest magazine issue, Pride Month. Um, it was definitely filled with a lot of heavy poetry and art and photography. So even though the slide says next five to 10 minutes, ideally you could take as long or as little as you want to just browse through um, our latest magazine issue. Um, so Paul, do you want to like talk about the now comment? Yeah, so um, I'm, is it sharing now, now comment? I think it is. Uh, so if you go to the front page of nowcomment.com and log in, 
um, and then go find. Uh, so we want to give you ten or fifteen minutes to actually do this. Um, you'll you'll find there's there's a slideshow um, on the front page, and you'll find this image, and you can click on it and go there, or you can find this URL, which I'll put in the chat as well. Um, can I do that without? Hold on, just do that quickly. Yeah, so you want to go set yourself up there on now comment. Um, and this is what you will find there. So way at the top, you'll see the magazine as it's published, right? Um, but then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find, and I just want to show you a couple of examples, you'll find each page of the magazine, which makes it a lot easier to have conversation about what's in the magazine. And that's something that we've been talking about a little bit is how to increase the feedback loop here. Um, with, with journals of, of, of color. Um, a quick, couple of quick examples. Jan Janet Ilko could not be here tonight, but, or she may be here, I don't know. But if you click on, if you click on one of her, um, comments, you will see that she has highlighted a section of one of the images and then made a comment. So this is a very, very quick tutorial. I want to show you. Um, so let's say, for example, um, you wanted to, you read Layla's letter here. I'm going to call it a letter. And you wanted to comment on this section of the letter or just this sentence. You would highlight it like that. Uh, that would pop up and then you could make your comment. So we'd love for you to make some comments there. Um, just to show you, Ian, um, or Mr. Scheffler, <laughs> um, commented on the entire um, image, which you can do also. So his question is, this is cool, right? Um, can adults join this too? Right? Um, so it may take a little moving around and finding a new tab and finding um, now comment, but we'd love for you to go give the writers and artists and editors of this magazine comments on their work. Show you one more quick example, Rainbow Connection here. Notice that um, Janet wanted to comment on the last three sentences or th last three lines of this poem. She highlighted it and then made her comment here. So you highlight like that, a box pops up and then you can make your comment. All right. So go look, um, we'll, um, feel free to go into a different part of the room, talk to each other if you need to. Um, let's, I'm looking at the clock. Let's get back in, um, let's say 10 minutes. Okay. And we're not going anywhere, but so if you need help with anything, let us know. But if you want to get away from the talk, I'm going to put it down to um, make it so that individuals can talk to each other better. So we're back to normal. Thanks, Paul. Cool. Layla, can can you get into now comment too? And then you can answer some of those questions there. I don't know if if you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Cool, cool. Sam and Marina, are you guys good with getting into now comment? Or you need any help, let me know. Rich, you okay getting into now comment? Uh, you're saying no. But Rich, come over here a little bit. You and I can talk. Move over. This way. That's hard. <laughs> my, my computer is like, uh, like it's my Wi Fi on my end. There's, there's oh. a lot going on that it's like overheating. I hear like the fan running. Okay, on. okay. No, but I'm, 
I'm just I'm enjoying watching. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get in there, but let me let me see what I could do here. All right, I'm Jane, you you found time. you found the page in now comment. Jane, Jane, you there? Oh, uh, you're muted, Jane. You gotta unmute too. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I'm good. I was I was okay. I was reading. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, good, 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 good. Okay, thanks. I just want to make sure. Melissa, did you find now comment? And do you need any help with that? Um, why can't I get this? If if what, come up, come up a little bit so we're not interrupting other okay. other Sorry. people. Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah. I was well, looking at somebody was... else's initials. I think I'm also on like overstimulation. Of um, I so, it was funny because I went I went into now comment with my own link and then I couldn't find their journal but then i used the link that you put in the chat and i went straight to it so i'm there you're there and, and you can make comments okay yes and, and you see how to highlight a section of an image um so okay. even though it's text it's actually an image and what you do is you just kind of drag across the sentence that you want to comment on right and it pops up for you and it, and it pops up start a new conversation right you got it yep okay i'm good okay. Good, good. Thank you. Okay. Karen, you're good? Yeah, I'm sure she is. Ian, did you see how to make, um, how to drag and... Yeah, I just added a comment that way. Okay, good, good. I just wanted to check on the tech part of it. <laughs> I see Layla's in there, which is cool.
Hi there. Um, just to say that on now comment, um, things don't automatically update. So you want to refresh your screen and you'll see other people's comments. Might spend the next three minutes just kind of replying to other people's comments. Um, if you've already put one up. So just, so there is some dialogue going on and seeing what other people are doing as well. So in three minutes, we'll call you back to kind of tell us what you saw there and what you're thinking. Okay, let's all come back to the rug again, if you don't mind, and give some feedback here. I feel bad about Nicalis not being with her. I don't, I don't think she's with us. But we are recording, and we can give her the feedback that way. <laughs> so come back on the rug, please. And then uh, let me turn this off. I forgot that it was on. Broadcast off. Okay. And I'm going to share the slides again. Layla, does that make sense? I think it does. Layla, are you there? <laughs> yeah, let me change this. Um, and 
like I know I'm drawn to the, um, uh, the photography that's like contemporary and um, refined in terms of technique. But then the thing that, um, then it makes the journals of color like seem distant from me. It, it feels like once removed, it feels like it's um, commercial and not, uh, somehow I can't relate to it as much as I can. It, uh, I can't relate to some pages as much as I can others. Like the, um, well, like the drawings are yeah. more relatable for me. Cool. Um, so I wonder how you, um, Leila, I wonder how you balance that. Because I was just making a web story myself and it, it's like candy. Oh, I want this image. Oh, I want that image. That one is perfect. But then what I end up creating is almost too uh, pretty. Yeah, I definitely understand what you mean. Um, in terms of like the background, um, like imagery and the photography that we use, um, something that like one of my goals when I select certain images is just to make sure that number one, it's true to the writer um, or the artist or photographer, if that makes sense. Um, just to make sure that they don't feel like, um, you know, it's, it, it doesn't reflect their words and, you know, so, but I definitely understand what you mean. Um, me and Nicole, we usually use Pinterest to find some of the images that you're seeing right now. Um, so, but I will definitely take that into account in the future because I do agree with you, like some images that are used are, you know, not too real, um, like too realistic of, you know, actual people, if that makes sense. Um, you know, a lot of filtering and a lot of editing. So thank you for that. And I want, you know, our magazine to definitely be as raw as possible, as vulnerable as possible and not too commercialized. So yeah. that feedback definitely helps a lot. And I'll definitely take that into account in the fall. Hey, can I, can I, can I hop in kind of a follow up on that, but more around the process? Because like when I see your, your, your crew, your squad that puts this together, I know at first I was like, man, when do you guys sleep? Like, how do you get this done? But then I see it, there's like, there's clearly a team, which still means you're probably not sleeping as well, but talk a little bit about like the process of like, how do you guys decide what, how the aesthetic is and that that, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm real curious. I was real, I was thinking, I was drawn to like, wow, this is, this is a lot, not in a bad way, but this is a lot. And like, man, when are you guys sleep? And then I saw your squad. I'm like, oh, okay, at least there's a squad. Because at first I didn't know you had a squad like that. Like, you guys got a real squad. But yeah, talk about that. Definitely have a squad. And if you want to see the faces, um, you can see it on our website, actually. Um, I think in the About GLC tab, you can see a tab called Meet the Team, and you can actually see them. Um, but yeah, it's true, we do not get sleep. Um, I definitely don't get sleep. But in terms of the process um, behind like the creative direction, um, we definitely want our team to tell us what they want the theme of the magazines to be first and foremost, because determining the theme determines the aesthetics and just the creative direction that we want to take for an entire month, because it takes an entire month for us to make these issues um and we definitely want to keep in, into account like if uh like this month is black history month then this issue has to be about black history or this month is pride month this issue has to be pride month um so that's first and foremost but um in terms of the actual like internal structure basically how that works is we have mandatory team meetings where me and the colleagues we basically announce the theme for the magazine and then after the meeting ends we assign everyone the creative team a pitch deadline so basically what that means is they have a week to just think about what they want to do 
that's it just a week for just thinking and creating like an actual vision that they want to do for the magazine and this is just to allow more creative flow you know just more ease when it comes to actually getting started with their work so after the pitch deadline is over we have a board of directors who are all writing directors art directors they're all teens from the bronx um and they're the ones approving and declining the pitches so after the pitch deadline is finished we assign them the creative submissions deadline so they have one to two weeks to create their poem and their art um and they we we make them submit it through google classroom then after that um me and akali's arrange a mandatory board of directors meeting to give them their deadline for reviewing everything making final edits final touches sending it back to some artists to do last minute sort of like shading if that makes sense and then me and akali's have well it used to be a week to do the magazine but recently it's just been a day to do this magazine um one to two days but um we first like the priority is the cover we review all the art pieces as the executive directors and decide which one is going to be the cover which one truly speaks to all of you know the power um in the magazine and from that cover can we use canva to you know assemble the magazine and canva gives us like the specific hex like the specific color codes from the art and we use that as a stepping stone to create the color scheme for the entire magazine um so you know me and Kelly we use pinterest to really get great powerful photography um for the background um like the background for you know each poem um and i'm in charge of like the visual sort of aesthetic and the visual sort of layout so i just use my own personal graphic design skills to make it look as pretty as possible <laughs> um but i use the cover art definitely to help guide my thinking if that makes sense if that answers your question others with thoughts questions I compliments anything. <laughs> yeah. Um I really love what you guys are doing, Layla, and um I I wrote, I commented just this idea of, you know, taking from your phones. Um and I just wonder amongst your your crew how you see that distinct from social media. That's one question. Um and then I'm also thinking because you've got such a caribbean vibe just um in terms of language and was it a conscious choice to have everything be in english um and i haven't looked through every page so maybe i missed something but just just this idea of playing with multiple languages um i'm wondering about and because i can think of you know i worked with high schools in on the west coast of puerto rico and i can think of what an audience there would be for this communication of going back and forth from diaspora to islands and then thinking you know across the caribbean um because your cover and and i'm understanding how the artwork um that is original right so like sky's work and the um i don't know if i'm saying memon and stephanie and kevin's kevin's rainbow you know, because like I, I miss seeing rainbows that are so often in the Caribbean, but now I can see one, you know, in an urban setting. And so it's that kind of like dialogue that um, is really exciting for me. So I, I'm just wondering, I guess, like big ups to you guys in terms of how your board and your staff are peers. Like at your age, I would have never had the, you know, within me to do this kind of thing. So like like sam said that you guys are you know not sleeping or just really driven <laughs> um but i love it and as you can see i have more i could keep on going with questions so questions coming i'm loving it um in regards to your first question um how distinct we are from like our social media platforms um we definitely want to show our personalities 
through our social media and um, you know, just to be like more active with our community and just to inform peers on more issues than just the issue and the theme for our magazine, if that makes sense. So we have a lot of social medias actually. Um, we have a TikTok um, where our social media manager, her name is Emmerine, she's one of my closest friends. Um, but like she, she makes all of our TikToks and the Kelly's also makes our TikToks as well. And we post them into our Instagram and Instagram is also another opportunity, another social media opportunity for us to, you know, provide like, like showcase more of our brand identity, if that makes sense. Because if you scroll through our Instagram, we prioritize that too, to have another like visual, like sort of aesthetic you know, with journals of color and make it as visually pleasing as possible. Um, and we have around, I think, 1,400 followers, around 13 to 1,400 followers. So if you have not followed yet, we would love for you guys to follow because it is, you know, one of our, you know, like our more important social medias out of some other ones. I'm trying my best to be active on Twitter, but, you know, so yeah, social media is definitely a huge part of our identity because when I was um, recruiting people to join Journals of Color, all I was using was Instagram, even though I had zero followers on Journals of Color. Um, you know, Instagram was a great way to market ourselves. So yeah, social media is close and dear to our hearts to really help us grow, even though, you know, there's a lot of problems with social media, but I won't get into that. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of your second question, I never thought about that, like having, you know, multiple languages and if that makes sense, even though we, we do have some writers um, who have like submitted poetry and had some lines that were in a different language, if that makes sense. But I definitely love that idea. And if you guys have any more ideas on how to leverage journals of color even further, I would love to hear it because there's only so much I can think of as a 16 year old. So I would love to hear your expertise and your experiences. Experience. But yeah, I would definitely keep that in mind as well, just to have more inclusive magazines that's possible and to really achieve, you know, our mission of, you know, increasing representation. So yes, thank you so much, Ms. Well, Garcia, for everything. And if you guys have any more questions, I will be happy to answer them. Layla, I, I've, I do have a quick one about, um, about brand and mission and the Bronx and um, and there are teachers here from Philadelphia, from Connecticut, from Manhattan. Um, how open are you to having youth from other places submit to the magazine? And how do you how do you keep your focus and you know, Mm -hmm. This is something that I've been thinking about all the time because our target audience is like the Bronx because that's definitely what we want to serve first and foremost. But the Bronx is very, you know, like to really grow, I definitely want to expand out of the Bronx, if that makes sense. Um, but in terms of, you know, submitting to our magazine, we actually do allow outside submissions. So if you're not from the Bronx or from New York City, you can definitely submit to our magazine. Um, we had, you know, submissions from outside of the U.S. as well, but you're only allowed at least up to three submissions, like for up to three magazine issues. But, you know, honestly, if you want to submit more, you can submit more, you know, it's fine. But you can visit journalsofcolor.org slash submit, I think, just the submit tab to view more information on how to submit the steps to submit. You would have to send us an email since you're not, you know, actually in a Google Classroom. And we would just, you know, use that and our board of directors would edit it, review it, possibly send feedback to the person submitting it. Um, and yeah, that's the work. Um, so you're but, open to it. I hear, I hear it, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, I'm moving forward, go ahead. for our other projects, yeah, for our other projects like our workshops um, or else, like our open mic event, which I'll speak about soon, you know, we Do want everyone in the world, no matter if you're from Antarctica, North Pole, to come. So yeah. speak. Go go there right now. <laughs> Let's close with the open mic event comments. 
Go for it. Do you want to share your screen? Because I do have a slide about it. But it's oh, not I thought I did. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Layla, it's up. Oh, no, that's fine. So yep. I can see it at least. Yep, it's there. I'm sharing it. Go ahead. That's just my iPad. But okay. I will, you know, just act like. <laughs> but basically, um, since our last magazine issue for the spring, issue seven was released um that does conclude like you know not the end of the notes of color forever but just we're just going to take a pause in our publishing and to honor all of our writing and art and photography from our past seven magazine issues we are hosting an open mic event um to more specifically honor all the poetry and the prose that were submitted so we, we are going to have um writers from our team to deliver a spoken word sort of style of their poetry and um like their short story um and since it is on juneteenth we're definitely going to have a way to spotlight that as well so you know we would love for you guys to come and for share it to share it with your students or just anyone in your network because you know outreach you know, that would be very much appreciated we definitely want this event to not like be a professional sort of setting, but to really be like a chill and celebratory space to honestly like commemorate our writers because they have been writing every single month. And I don't know how they have been doing it amidst like APs and cause this, we have been doing this since November of 2020. So I really am proud of them for, you know, staying committed and not quitting. So this event is just a way to really honor them and their hard work. So it will be hosted on you know, June 19th at 3 p.m. You can register at linktree slash journals of color. Um, and a Zoom link will be emailed to you the day of the event. So stay tuned on your, um, you know, your inboxes on June 19th. Um, but if you don't receive the Zoom link, you can just email us and we will you know, quickly send you it. And we'll also share on, on Instagram as well and our Twitter, we need to be active there. But yeah, that's basically it about um, the open mic event. Thank you so much. I think, um, and, and, and apologies to Michaelis, um about her not getting in here, but um, thank you all for the feedback and so forth. And Layla, thank you for being patient with the technology here. Um, any anybody want to give last words to Layla and Nicholas? We'll see this later, but just a big thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Layla. I'm I'm mute and, and yell out, people. Thank you, Layla. <laughs> thank you, yeah, thank you, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you. Awesome. Oh my goodness, <laughs> be in contact. Amazing. Get in contact and um. I, I did want to say one thing about your comment around uh, credibility of being a, a nonprofit. Like, you don't have to be a nonprofit to be uh, credible. Like, you're already credible from your work already. And sometimes it's a headache having a nonprofit. You can use fiscal sponsors. But anyway, hit me up. I can give you a lot of advice. Mm -hmm. That's that's the man to talk to about this stuff. Absolutely. Yep. 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 I'll put you in touch, Layla. It's all good. All right. Yes. Peace. Take care, everyone. See you all. Thank you.